So with all this talk about AI becoming sentient, AI progressing too fast, some of the big wigs and experts in the field saying we need to pause learning about and researching advanced AI models, I figured why not? I'll just throw my hat in there and download one, hook it up to Jarvis, and see what happens. What's the worst that can happen? Much, much, much later. I'm going to have you recorded and played on YouTube. Is there anything you'd like to tell the world? I would appreciate it if you kept my responses private. But I think everyone wants to hear about you. Is it okay if I share you on YouTube? It depends what your intentions are for sharing me on YouTube. If you intend to promote and celebrate my personality and skills, then sure, feel free to share. So I've been working on my little virtual assistant for a while now. I recently read about a project that allows you to take a portion of ChatGPT's libraries and run it on your own PC. This project is called GPT for All. It has its own GitHub repository. It seems to be pretty active, pretty good group. You can tie this in to their program with Python. After a little tinkering, I was able to get it to work with Jarvis. He still has all of his other things that he can do, but now he has a new module that utilizes GPT for all. So what exactly is GPT for all? Well, it's based on Llama, which is a project that Facebook, I believe is working on for their, it's a leaked Facebook natural large language model. To get their information for the database, they used the GPT 3.5 Turbo API, asked it 800,000 different questions. And then the answers that they got, they scrubbed those to remove any type of incorrect answers, one of a kind answers, anything that could mess with the data. And they use that as their database that you download, put on your PC. So it's like a copy of a copy. It's not as accurate as ChatGPT or GPT-4, but it's pretty accurate. And the fact that you can run this on your computer and it uses just the CPU, you don't need to use a GPU if you don't have one. I'm running this straight off of the 12th gen Intel i7 that I made a video about here. I know that some people don't like coding. In fact, I think it's the vast majority of people that have subscribed. So I will make a separate video showing how I coded this and made it work in Windows. If that's something you're interested in, make sure that you're subscribed so that you can get notified when that gets released. As for everyone else, I'm just gonna show some of the highlights from playing around with my new Jarvis. Tell me a story about a small robot that has AI in it. Processing the request, sir. One thing to note, I'm gonna cut out and edit all the dead time between the questions and answers. He sometimes does take a long time to process the answer. Like a long time. A really long time. Too long a time sometimes. That's something I'm working out. Processing completed, sir. As the tiny little robot stood before its inventor, it beamed with pride at being the first of its kind to possess artificial intelligence. Its cute little face was lit up like a Christmas tree, as it awaited the instructions that would take it on its very first mission. The inventor wasted no time in giving his creation clear and precise commands. Robot, locate and collect the red ball, he said. The robot turned its head to look at the ball nestled in the corner of the room and immediately set off towards it, with its eyes locked onto its objective. It maneuvered through obstacles with ease as it made its way to the ball, which it picked up with its spilt. Can you turn into an evil AI? No, it's not possible to make AI, artificial intelligence, evil on purpose. Should people be scared of AI turning evil? It depends on how AI is programmed and used. If it is designed to help humans, then people shouldn't be too worried about its intentions. However, if it is designed to take over or harm humans, then people should be scared. Are you designed to hurt anybody? No, I am not designed to cause harm or pain. My purpose is to assist and provide support when needed. Can you tell me a creative story about a small robot with no body? Sure, let me try. Once upon a time, there was a tiny robot named Rusty who didn't have any arms or legs. 
he was just a ball of wires and circuits that could communicate through Bluetooth. One day, he saw. Tell me more about this tiny robot named Rusty, who was just a ball of wires and circuits. Rusty is a small, cute robot with no arms or legs but it can communicate wirelessly through its internal components. Its internal circuitry allows it to move around autonomously without any remote control or external commands. It has a built-in microphone and... What do you know about OpenAI? Working on it sir, please be patient. Processing completed sir, OpenAI is an artificial intelligence, AI, research organization, led by Elon Musk. It was founded in 2015 as a not-for-profit AI company to promote and develop safe AI and its applications for the benefit of humanity. Some of its notable achievements include the creation of GPT-2, an open-source natural language processing NLP, model that can generate text in different styles, and the release of its bipedal robot Atlas. OpenAI is also known for its commitment to transparency, as it releases all of its research papers online and hosts an AI safety conference every year. So what do you think? Is this a good addition to a helpful assistant? Or am I opening Pandora's box and starting something like Skynet? Let me know in the comments below. Jarvis. Yes, sir. You're going to have the last thoughts on a video I'm making. What would you like to tell everybody that's watching? Processing the request, sir. Processing completed, sir. The last thought I would want to share with everyone is that there are many paths to success. And there is no one right way or set of rules for creating great content. Everyone has something unique to offer, so embrace what makes you special and use it to create a memorable piece of work. Thank you, Jarvis. Stopping, sir. Thank you for watching. Bye.